How's it going everyone? This is going to be my video walkthrough of Anti-Tower from Final Fantasy XIV Heaven Sword. Um, it's not really going to be a crazy guide, but um, I will explain how the mechanics work to a degree. This is like the third time I've run this um, dungeon. I uh, really enjoyed it. And i um, going to head in there right now. Uh, as always, I'm playing with the most awesome healer, Leaf of Space Buns, and the crazy ninja, Cephas. They're part of my FC. They're great people. They have actually helped me a lot. And then this random person is um, my most favorite class ever. It's a bard. <laughs> I'll be honest up front, I, I bards irritate me in this game. They um, tend to die a lot, in my experience. And um, when you're using a character like I do, which is Dark Knight, sometimes you need um, support for MP because I don't have to watch TP too much. But uh, sometimes I burn through my um, MP too fast and I'm always asking the bard to play the MP song as long as I'm not running Dark Side, which I'm usually not. But um, they just never seem to give a crap, but whatever. Um, on this part, you just um, you just grab these um, NPCs or mobs or whatever you want to call them. And, uh, Make sure you hold the aggro. I'm not doing a very good job right here. Uh, sometimes I'm a little late to the party. But basically, you just, you know, tank the crap out of these things. And that's about it. Okay, now we got that finished up, and you're gonna um, head over to this platform, and it's gonna launch you up onto some other um, platform. I gotta say, this whole area is just amazing in how it looks. Um, it's really fun. The backwards or upside down castle in the background, um, pretty cool. Again, just um, as a tank, just tank these enemies. Uh, make sure you hold the aggro. Healers don't like it when you don't hold aggro; they get pissed off if they have to do extra work. That's and always a given, um, so any good tank should always keep um, all the enemies all over your ass. <laughs> um, there's so much going on here. Flash, bang. Alright, and then you start to whittle all these enemies down. Um, in this section, no more will pop up. So you beat the living crap out of this guy. And you're done with this little platform section. And as you saw down there in the corner, the next platform section appears, and it's the same thing as the last one, just run across it. And it'll shoot you up to the next one. Then to this one, there's a treasure coffer, treasure chest. And then, um, again, just tank. Make sure you hold the aggro. I want one of tools. I probably should, uh, <laughs> at some point clean up all my, my HUD displays. I have so much going on. This dungeon's pretty cool for the, um, for the 3.2 years of change. And right here you're going to have two more enemies pop up, so this section is going to have a total of five. And uh, make sure you, as a tank, um, grab the aggro, because you don't want to, um, as I've stated a million times, do not piss off your healer. <laughs> uh, your life's going to suck. The bard doesn't matter. <laughs> you spoony bard! If anyone gets that one. 
Uh, yeah, see right there, I kind of screwed up. Um, as a Dark Knight, I rock Unleash a lot. Um, I still use um, Flash from and Provoke from Warrior or Slash Marauder and Gladiator. I don't recall which ones they come off of, but it's one of the it's those two for sure. Flash is Gladiator. Um, Provoke is the same, maybe. Uh, I don't know, but either way, you get them from using other tank classes and using cross class abilities. And then, uh, yeah, you just um, whittle these guys down. And this is pretty much going to wrap it up for this section. A little silly there. You run over and uh, grab the treasure coffer. Maybe there'll be some good loot. Maybe not. And it was just some stuff that I really could care less about and Cephas got it so all right now for the first um, sub boss mini boss boss whatever you want to call him this frog guy is kind of um interesting it's not very hard at all basically all you really have to do is a tank is just literally beat on him um, I always throw the ready check blow the froggy a kiss because I'm silly like that um, he's gonna at some point turn you into a frog and if he does turn you into a frog all you really need to do is run along the outside because he'll drop a, um, an uh, AOE on you like that but it's constantly and it's much bigger so you'll have to run along the outside which is your easiest way of dodging it and not getting hit until you just turn back into yourself um, other than that it's pretty straightforward it's just um, as far as I do it, I just tank and spank, as they say. I, I really don't need to do anything else other than just dodge. They don't get killed and beat on them. Okay, at some point here, he's going to you know, get some ads to come in. Um... <sighs> the DPS should take the ads, and I believe, you, you know, I've done this two ways where I've not bothered with them, but this time I did because I didn't want to just not do anything to help. So, um, I honestly say go for it if you feel like it, or don't if your team agrees to not have you worry about it as a tank. Some bosses uh they'll tell you just to don't pay attention to ads and keep ugly busy this one i decided to go for the ads just for the hell of it and then there's another one to go after it helps kill it faster keeps everybody else focused on captain dingbat in the middle there This boss really isn't hard at all. It's just dealing with him doing the normal crap, hitting you, doing magic stuff, calling ads. Um, I haven't gotten turned into a frog, surprisingly. And I unlocked my target for some reason. Yeah, I don't think he turns me into a frog in this one. I somehow completely avoided that even happening. It is bad. No. I do go out there. I honestly couldn't tell you what those music notes are for other than they blow up like that, I guess. I haven't really figured it out until this is like my third time playing it. This this dungeon does um does drop the tombstones of esoterics and lore, which is why a lot of people run it over and over and over to get their lore cap for the week. Which um is why we're running it. My teammates wanted to get more lore and 
they both love this dungeon. As you can see, he's almost dead. He's kind of pummeling softer. Always a good one. Damage over time. Very small amount, but it helps. Cooked frog. Frog legs, anyone? Yum. So, that's one dead frog. And then, um, treasure coffer pops up. And you get some loot. Some boots I didn't need, but I greet it because I can always trade it in at the Grand Company for seals. Which is helpful because the easy way to get ventures for your retainer is, you know, buy ventures with your seals. And then you just turn in all that crap for more seals and then um, this is the next section and you're going to want to tank these two mimics for this little part and that's about it for this little round part uh, you beat on these two then you'll go after the treasure coffer or if someone goes for it first but yeah just kill these and then you'll move on to the next part Okay, here you want to um, grab the Spriggan. Uh, the doors will appear, and these flame things will <laughs> pop out. And um, you want to grab those too, grab all the aggro. But the idea is to kill the Spriggan as quickly as possible because I believe it stops um, other um, enemies from coming out the doors. So you want to take him out ASAP. The help of everyone else. Yeah, I see there's more. Um, kill him. Uh, grab those two. I got four total. I don't think any more come after you kill the Spriggan Doorkeeper. Okay, and after you defeat those, you're going to come down to this next section, and there's going to be three rock-like golem type guys, and you just tank these three, and, you know, just beat them down, and that's it for this part right here. Um, I really wish my tank would do more damage, but, you know, whatever, it is what it is, but yeah, beat the th crap out of these three guys, and then you're on to the next spot down the set of stairs over here. Alright, once you defeated those three, you're going to go down that set of stairs, and again, there's another Spriggan doorkeeper, and just like the last time, doors will appear, and the flame 
or the fire humoculus will appear and you're going to grab everything also that pile of rocks will turn into a uh, another one of those rock golem things again and it's the same thing as last time beat the doorkeeper keep more from appearing and grab aggro and just pummel everything you know, my eight mp's running low right there from using unleash so for a dark knight when you run out of mp that's terrible because you won't be able to cast unleash which is the thing that gets everyone's attention the easiest although my three main actions increase aggro but it's not like as much as you'd like it to or as unleashes like it usually grabs their attention quickly that's see I'm having that problem right now where I only got two of their attention and three of them are just like nope don't care about you as you can see it's green and then there's the one turning yellow and then turn red and I'm trying to replenish my MP over time quickly but it burns a lot of MP to throw unleashed I have moves that replenish, as you can see, but it's not working too well right here. I think I was getting frustrated too, so I don't like not being able to do my job. So as I said, yeah, you just take out the Spriggan and then beat all these guys and you're done with this section. Alright, now that that part's done, on to Ziggy, which is the next boss or sub-boss or whatever you want to call it. Um, the bard's trying to rush me. Um, I don't care for that. I'm the tank. I control the fight. I'm not trying to be snooty, but you know, if I'm holding the aggro, then it needs to be on me, and the bard may be experienced, but they need to take a chill pill. As you can see, I'm probably asking them to do something like play the MP song because why not replenish MP over time? It's kind of helpful. And I'll initiate the ready check. <laughs> but um, this is Ziggy, and he's going to cast a lot of things called um, Stardust, kind of in memory of David Bowie, I believe. Um, great musician. Listen to him growing up. So he casts these rocks that are called Stardust, and you can either help or, like I said, it depends on how your team wants you to do it. If you're the tank, um, they may ask you to help with adds and other sort of things when you're fighting bosses. This one, they didn't care that I just worried about the main boss, but they went after the things called Stardust, and they dropped down. And he's going to target someone. See, as right there, he's targeting the bard. And what you want to do is you want to hide behind the rock because he's going to attack. And the rock's going to protect you. Also casts um, that attack, which is just a directional attack. And then again, the stardust and the DPS will take it. And... Over time, the areas of effect will get bigger and bigger, so you kind of got to watch out for that while tanking. As you can see in this video, I just totally focus on this guy. There's also um, Spriggans that pop up. Um, sometimes you may want to take those ads as well. Um, see, now I got the tether on me, and I'm going to hide. He does it three times, I think. And there's the third one. And then you continue to do some damage. Dodge that again. Move 
move out of the way. Watch out for that. The fight's pretty repetitive. It does help to grab aggro from the ads so they can all come after you. Healer can just worry about healing you and the DPS can do its thing. Just gotta set this on the tether. I'm just gonna lay down the herd right now. <laughs> uh, he does, um, on the, I think the second attack when he's tethered to someone, will swing towards that character and then do his third one. But it's gonna be one, two, and on the second one he's gonna fly over there and then you're gonna keep hiding and then he's gonna do a third one and that's it. And it's gonna repeat. Ads are gonna pop up. And you take those. And this fight pretty much is the same thing over and over and over throughout its entirety. So you just wanna basically rinse and repeat. They're pushing it right there for me. Go after the ads a little bit, help out. I really don't have to. Um, the healer and the ninja in this are godly. They're so good. Like, without Leaf of Space Bones and Cephas, this would have been a painful fight, probably. I don't know the bard. I'm not going to even say their name. I don't. I don't know what to say, they're just being a bard. I mean, they help, but it's whatever. And he's almost dead. Poor Ziggy. Big status. Finished up. And baboosh. Done deal. The treasure. Grab the loot if you want it, greet it. Like I said earlier, you can just trade it in, sell it, wear it. Depends on your class. Um, I'm rocking my, my average gear is uh, 200. I have a 210 and two 230s. So overall, I'm 206 item level. So none of the gear here I would actually need. You could always glamour it if it suits your needs. Um, right here is interesting. The bard decided to um, go ahead and initiate everything because I was lagging but um there's gonna be four dudes here uh two Mangus and then I believe it's two Vikings just kill them and that's for this part All right, you're gonna finish up uh, this section, uh, two Magus and then two Viking, and you're just gonna head down the hallway to a room that is closed, and there'll be like this circle thing in the middle that looks like a giant button, which you'll see coming up pretty soon here. Damn bards. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you're gonna step on that platform and it's gonna drop out two centaurs. And just grab aggro. And just walk on these guys. I really think it'd be cool if they made um, the centaur mount in this game. That'd be kind of cool. Ride around on one of those, like, check this out. But who knows, you never know. Just, um, want these two? I am losing aggro on one. Get dum dum. The yellow. Um.
All right, finish that bastard up, and you're gonna head down this hallway and make a left down there towards the end. And uh... oh, that's <laughs> that bard. I swear, just wants to be a tank. <laughs> As I say in the comments, Bard Tank, eh? LOL. Um, I'm pretty sure I was not laughing out loud. I think I was just being nice because I wanted to, like, say we could friggin' stop. But, whatever. I'm just kind of mean towards Bards. I've had... This Bard's actually... Okay. Like, they can handle it. Uh, losing aggro again right there. Um, it's gonna be four guys again, just like the first time you walk into this whole area. Um, Amagus. And two viking or sorry two maggots two viking take those guys out at some point take forever those be cool minions probably sure you could get them as minions i haven't really looked into it i'm more of a mount collector at the moment and you're gonna walk into this room, which is just like that last room, step in the middle, and it's gonna drop um, a Viking and a Magus, one each. Alright, after you kill the first two, um, two more are going to show up, one each again, and you just, you know, grab your aggro and, and take them out, work on them, whittle them down, do your thing. Always awesome in Final Fantasy, like, tons of particle effects, magic, animation. Okay. Ooh, that one's fancy. <laughs> Death from above. But yeah, I just work on these two until, um, you know, as usual, kill them. Okay, um, the two centaurs drop and then another magus and another viking will show up. And, you know, you grab your aggro and, uh, keep them off the healer. Beat the living crap out of these guys. section got a little intense like that. Avoid the AoEs. Ooh, got a, little, got a little kick to the face there. I think on this one I just stopped dodging in general. <laughs> Which um, make an effort to dodge your healer we would really appreciate it. They um they aren't happy when they gotta keep healing you, especially if you're really squishy, which used to happen to me a lot. Um and I'll tell you one thing, if your healer runs out of MP, you are all screwed. Just totally screwed. Um, there's no avoiding that, so you want to try to like, do your best to not have them work as hard. Because they do need to work on other things, like healing the other uh, characters that are playing with you. Um, I've been told by some healers that they won't even heal some DPS, just because it's not their priority. They'll let them just die, they don't care. Uh, it's kind of messed up, but I have seen it happen. Um, yeah, you just kind of finish this up and you head on down the hallway. And right here is like my favorite part. Um, this fight is a throwback to like literally my favorite, most favorite Final Fantasy title, Final Fantasy IV. This is the the Calcabrina fight from when you're in the underworld trying to get the um, dark crystals. Um, as Cecil, um, I believe you become a paladin at this point already in the game, but you can see why I chose Dark Knight in this game because I love it. Um, you're gonna have to kill all these dolls rather quickly. Well, it does, I mean, quickly be nice, but they do the whole like 
Kryptonian eye laser <laughs> laser blast that's, you know, going to nail you in a circle and just dodge. They go down pretty quick. There's Kalka, and then the other one's Brina. Um, oh, this fight's so much fun. It's such a nostalgia. But yeah, let's take them down, and they're all going to come together and create uh, the giant one that you fought again in Final Fantasy IV, so they put it in this game, which I'm see how I'm doing the dance because I'm so happy. And in this fight, you pretty much just need to um, do the tank and spank, but Kakabrina is going to turn two of the uh, other teammates into dolls, and the goal is to kill those dolls as fast as possible to break your other characters out. And then the next time it happens, it's probably going to happen to you and the other person that it didn't happen to you before. So, it'll happen. But this fight is so much fun for me. It brings back my childhood from playing Final Fantasy IV, which was actually labeled as Final Fantasy II on the Super Nintendo. I still have the cartridge. Um, I have the remake on Steam for the DS, which looks terrible. I prefer the old Super Nintendo version, which I have a PlayStation 1 version that added uh, cinematic scenes to it and changed the dialogue a little bit. So let's see, as you can see right here, I had to break out um, someone from the doll form. And Cal Cabrina's having a temper tantrum. And you're just going to keep beating living crap out of this one. I wonder when I'm going to turn into up. Oh, there it is. And now it's my turn to be a doll. And while you're a doll, you just endlessly dance around, causing grief, doing the AoE attacks just like the first part of this fight. And here's Cephas and Leafa busting us out. And I'm going to go back to beating on Calcabrina. Constantly doing Salt Earth. It's like my favorite move. Because as I stated earlier, it's uh, very small damage over time, but I mean it slowly eats away at the life and it's very helpful. This is a great, great dungeon. I mean, I could do this one constantly. I know um, my FC members are constantly doing this dungeon for the tombstones. Plus they love it. Music's great. There's that barrier. Ready for attack. Knocks me back, knocks me back. Bust out shadow skin, get my defense up a little bit. God, just keep hitting me. Ass. Oh, turn me into a doll again. That's two times now. I'm dancing, dancing, dancing. Team Brina. <laughs> yeah, I had to take some screenshots of that. Come on, bust me out already, damn it! Alright, back to the fight. Run back in there and do some work. Yeah, just keep wailing on her. And don't let up. And after that awesome Linda break, that's the end. One dead doll. And there's the treasure cover. And what's great about this is, ah, uh, the minion. Uh, the minion Brina. And I totally got it. Um, the rivalry between me and the the FC members was awesome right now because I got it and they didn't. They were like, oh, what? But um, it's really fun. We'll we'll all get it eventually. Because I guess there's two. There's Kalka and then Brina. I ended up with Brina. 
And um, so yeah, that's the anti-tower fight. Um, it's a lot of fun. It's probably one of the better dungeons I've done in this game. It's repeatable, like it's just a lot of fun to do over and over and over again. So um, thanks for watching the video. Uh, leave a comment, leave suggestions on how to make my videos better. Please subscribe, um, like it if you want. I'd love it if you did, but um, yeah, that's the anti-tower fight for Final Fantasy XIV Heaven Sword. Um, there we are, our ponies just hanging out on top of the FC house that we got in uh, the mists. Uh, the southwest end if you ever want to come by we're usually hanging out out front if we're not doing something um you guys all have a great day thanks for watching take it easy peace